is an abandoned BMW M3, and we're gonna fix it in just 24 hours. The BMW M3 is one of the greatest driving cars of all time, and the E46 generation, which this one happens to be, is considered the very best. It also happens to be one of my favorites. It's possible I may be a little biased though, because I had one years ago and loved it. So when I heard about this one just sitting in the back of a shop nearby, I felt sad. As a car enthusiast, I hate when cars just sit and aren't driven, especially something as special as an M3. It just hurts to see something that someone could be enjoying rotting away somewhere. So I called the owner, negotiated a deal, and now we're gonna fix it and then sell it to someone who will properly enjoy it because it shouldn't just be sitting here all sad and, and lonely. We need to diagnose the problems because we have actually no information on this car, get all the parts, and then hopefully fix it. I guess first thing to do is see if this thing starts. I have a key and a title, so I know it's a real vehicle. I'm hoping this key belongs to it, and hopefully it'll just start, but I'm sure seeing that it's been left back here, that will not be the case. Nice. I noticed that a second ago. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's gross in there a little. Oh yeah. Oh, there's some stuff. Yep. All right. <laughs> that was to be expected. Literally. Why is that lighting up? What is that? Is that a radar detector? Hardwired Valentine 1 radar detector. This thing was baller back in the day. Wait, where is that mounted to? I don't know. Dude, look at the shifter. That's not bad. That's gotta be a short shifter. Or something. Yeah. There's a lot of worn down things. Like, look at this. Oh, That's someone gross. definitely used this thing. This is, these get beat up, but it's probably sitting outside in the sun and heat. We have a jump pack at the shop, but it's so close, we could probably just get some people to push it there. All right, we're gonna get it to, <laughs> We're gonna get it over to our shop and then see if we can get this thing started with a jump pack. And hopefully, fingers crossed, it runs. If we have engine problems, we're in for a whole world of pain because these E46s have been known to have a few issues, but usually it's a lot of other things that go wrong with these cars. So I'm sure there's plenty only of problems. Only sometimes the engine, yeah? Yeah, only sometimes the engine. This isn't like, you know, doesn't have, hopefully the frame isn't cracked. Oh yeah. Yeah, that happens with these. All right, let's push it. All right, we'll be back. We have the BMW inside the shop all pushed in. And now we got to give it a, a little jump start. I'm at the back because the battery is actually back here. Oh, yeah. You need the battery to open that. <laughs> That's a good point. It's not really a modern car, but it's new enough to have that problem. Oh, there's some... Well, the battery's exposed already, which probably means that that's the problem. There's a CVS. This is an auto zone receipt. What did they buy? An oil filter and oil. And then somehow it's this long. Wow. This is some CVS stuff right here, man. Yeah. You got a big bottle bag. Is that a hose? Nope, it's a dog leash. It's All right. Oh. Um, oh, a triple that, charger. Yeah, that'll do it. Bumping a lot of signs point you to the fact that this battery is toast. A pumpkin spice thing. <laughs> a glove. Oh, a holiday card. Glove. Notes. Sunglasses case with no sunglasses. Better give it a shot at least. I have a feeling it's not gonna turn on. I am an optimist. I'm praying on your downfall right now. Yeah, that's messed up. It's actually a hard downfall. That's true. Noises are happening. Oh Noises my God, the light came on. It's so hot, I am gonna start it with the door closed. I know that's bad. Right. Well, if it starts. That's a good point. Hold on. Oh my God, she's beeping alive. Okay, lights are on. Negative 1800 inspection miles, whatever that means. I don't know. Oh, we got, I forgot about this aftermarket stereo. Hold on. Oh man, it's on. Yeah, it's actually running right. No smoke out the back. Oh, it's out of gas. Oh yeah, Before kill it. I guess we know it runs. We have a tendency with cars that we bought, like the Aston Martin, everybody's like, don't forget to check the oil. When cars sit for a long time, the oil degrades. Plus we actually have no idea how much oil is in this, but I'm shocked. I mean, I'm not that shocked. We don't know the last time it was driven, so. It sounds super healthy. Hold on. Yeah, it didn't even like tick or anything. Just give this Jackson knows how to open the hood on one of these because he had one and his was That's how I know it sounds okay. Yeah. Oh, we have a K&N intake. And some mouse remnants. Yeah. But the fact that it started means the mice haven't gotten to anything important. Let's check the oil. I'm gonna start it one more time and we're gonna just listen for any bad sounds because I'm not 100% convinced yet 
I, I almost think we should change the oil before we start it. Because these engines have such big problems. All right, well, that's fair. At least yeah. we know we'll change the oil before we do any more shenanigans so we all don't blow this up together and you don't get mad at me for it. Um, yeah, but that's a great sign. These cars notoriously spin rod bearings because they don't get oiled properly, so better be safe than sorry than to even run it on oil that might be really, really old. And yes, I know what you're thinking, by the way. Convertible, really? Not my first choice. However, look at the spec. It's, it's factory manual. Nice and interior. It's got the cinnamon interior, which is actually pretty cool. And this car, yeah, the convertibles are less desirable, but it's still an M3. It's a good it's still vibe. Fun to drive. Yeah. It's a vibe car. They're also way less expensive than the coupes. Which is why we could have this one. <laughs> But it's not a car that I plan on keeping, but I think it's a car that people should be able to enjoy. It shouldn't just be left. And I'm actually really happy that we just got this thing started. It might not seem that way, and that's because I'm scared about what... You knock the light I'm over. scared about what else we may find. <laughs> in order to see what we might find, we need to get the car up into the air. First step of the car not being in the air, I'm gonna take a look at the brake pads, which honestly have a lot of life left in the rear. The front's where all the braking takes place, though. Well, most of it. Wow, yeah, those are like new pads, but the rotors are just really rusted. That'll be fine though, I think, when we get it moving. Yeah, we should be able to shake all that just surface rust off, no problem with some heavy braking. We're gonna check on everything underneath this here when we do the oil change, it's the only way to get there. But in the meantime, let's take a look at all the suspension components. There's a little bit of surface rust, but actually not too bad. Look in here. So you see right above the exhaust here, that little rubber piece? Yeah. That's called the guibo. That takes all the force of the drive shaft when it's spinning and brings power from the engine to the wheels, it absorbs a little bit of it, so it allows for some play. Because if it were metal on metal, you would break many things from the torque. But the guibo here is something that usually cracks, but I'll be honest, this one has no signs of cracking. It actually looks really good. You can't really see on camera, but it does yeah. look really good. It does not look bad. Oh man, look at those diff bushings over there. Those things oh are my God. falling apart. Those are, those are super messed up. We're gonna be feeling that when we're driving for sure. Uh, on old BMWs, diff bushings, they usually go <laughs> at this point. Will's M Coupe actually needed diff bushings. Yeah. So it's not bang on the boring. Bang on the wheels back here. The reason Will wants me to bang on the wheels is to check for any play. If the wheel has any, it could mean that the hubs and bearings are toast, which would create a lot more work for us. But luckily, it seems okay. Yeah, this car's been sitting, by the way, for like two years. Um, doing nothing so it's yeah, not the struts are like dry dude it looks yeah, good. there's no liquid coming off anything i don't see any like i don't see any obvious signs of leaking we're gonna have to take the front cover off to see if the oil yeah. has been leaking we should go get some stuff to do an oil change before we do that anyway yeah. so but so far we're looking quite good on this m3 you're really glistening right now man. i'm very sweaty nothing horrible has happened to this car however most of the catastrophic things would likely happen to the front engine portion of the car <laughs> the next day. We have all the parts we need to hopefully get this car right and uh, on the road once again. And we're gonna start with all of the general maintenance stuff. We have a huge order from our friends at FCP Euro. We have all the parts you need for a European car, including a, a kit for an E46 M3 to change all of the uh, things that need to be changed, especially after the car has been sitting for two years. So we have filters, we have oil, we have uh, other fluids, we have spark plugs. Uh, and we have mystery fluid that's in German. Don't even know what it is, but we'll figure that out in momentarily. I think it's, what is this? Brake fluid. fluid. Dip fluid? Yeah. Oh boy. The time starts now. It is, well, it's a bad time to start. It's 11 in the morning. So let's see how long this takes. I don't think it ever is a good time to start. That's true. <laughs> I think it all just equals out. <laughs> There's all the hours are included. I have absolutely no idea how these spark plugs on. I think you have to take the intake off. Oh, great. Yep. All right, let's begin. <laughs> Turns out you don't have to take the intake out, but you do have to take a lot of other things out in order to get to the plugs and coil. First comes the strut brace, and then we can move on to getting the plastic cover off. Even with it off though, it's still really tricky to access everything, which is why we're also gonna take off the cabin air filter housing, which should give us all the room we need to start getting the spark plug out. As you can see, the uh, spark plug is a little fried here. So good thing we're replacing it. The coil packs look actually fine. So we're gonna reuse those, but replace these. It wasn't too bad. We're in like what, how many minutes? 15? Yeah, 
it's been like 15 minutes. So we're making good progress. We'll have these in. It'll be like 25 minutes and then we can move to the next thing. Now, if you haven't done spark plugs, it's a pretty easy job. You just remove the coil pack, which sits on top of the plug itself, and then use a special spark plug socket to slowly get the plug out. From there, you just put the new ones in, making sure you don't cross thread them. Trust me, that would be the worst day of your life. Once we finish that, we can quickly put the engine bay back together, including replacing the cabin air filter, which is all going really smoothly. I literally hate dropping things in the engine bay and I just dropped a, a, a very helpful helpful tool that I'm gonna need. I'm gonna try fishing that back out with a magnet, but it's buried super deep. Uh, well, luckily I have another 13, but I'm gonna need to grab that when we do the oil change because I cannot get it from up here. In order to get my socket back, I'm gonna throw the car in the lift and take the under tray off, but I'm hoping that it didn't get stuck anywhere. Otherwise, this could be an issue. No, come on now. Hey, the 13. Woo All right, well, I did take this off really just to get my uh, 13 back. However, uh, it's probably good to take a look at all this stuff, and I think we got a little lucky. We never checked this when we were looking at the car ordering parts, but the steering rack is not leaking. It looks to be in decent shape. There's obviously some corrosion up here, but nothing important. The tie rods look fine, which the tie is rods nice. look good, and the belt is like brand new. So it looks brand new, and it doesn't look like, well, this one of the belts is a little older, but they both look fine. That's great. Now, we're gonna drain the oil, which I think is from right here. Well, the uh, the the thing is stripped. The drain bolt is stripped. Of course it's stripped. That's gonna eat a lot of our time. It's officially been uh, about an hour and a half. Sorry. So, we're making decent progress, but this could hold us up. Bill's trying to hammer in a bigger, uh, a bigger Torx to try to get it out. Going to the left. Yeah, I am. Dude, you're going to the right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's why you stripped it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's my fault. God damn it. I'm really bad with my directions. <laughs> you don't even know. This guy doesn't even know what left is, bro. <laughs> okay, that's my bad. <laughs> this oil is gross. After letting all the old oil drain out, we can quickly put the new drain plug in. Now, the logical next step would be to complete the oil change. But since I'm already under the car draining fluids, I'm gonna move over to the transmission, which is blocked by just a single under tray. Now time for a part that I dread, which is draining the transmission fluid. If you've never smelled transmission fluid before, good for you. It smells terrible. <laughs> and this is a bad, bad thing to get in the nose. Since I hate the smell of transmission fluid and assume it's probably horrible to breathe, I'm just gonna undo the drain plug and run away. It smells bad. Really bad, I'm gonna move away while it's draining. <laughs> Once fully drained, I can put a new drain plug in, tighten it to spec, and then detach the fill plug which is on the side of the transmission. Something very interesting on E46s is that they say this. Lifetime oil, no oil change. That's on the transmission, and honestly, it's kind of not totally true. You wanna change your transmission fluid, um, you can theoretically never change your transmission fluid, uh, but that is not really the truth. Um, I think it was an attempt at, I guess, trying that. I, I don't really understand it, but uh, from all the research I've done online, you want to change your transmission fluid at a certain point. Maybe this transmission fluid lasts a long time, but it's not lasting forever. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, and this car has been driven quite a few miles, so it could use it. In order to fill the transmission fluid the fastest, I'm using a hand pump, which makes it honestly super easy. It's just starting to overflow, which means we have the right amount of fluid in. We'll let that drip for a second. I don't wanna overfill it because once the transmission gets warm, you can kind of seep some fluid out of the side there. With that done, it's as easy as bolting back the fill plug and moving to the next step. I forgot to record, but I got the oil filter out. It wasn't hard, you didn't miss much. With the oil filter out, I'm gonna replace all the rubber gaskets. From there, I simply pop a new filter in, close the housing, and then can start filling the car up with fresh oil. Now this car takes some very obscure, very expensive BMW specific oil. So I'm trying to be really careful not to spill any because I don't wanna have to buy any more. Now I can bolt the under trays back on and drop this thing on the ground where we can move on to the next step. We need to start picking up the pace though because we've already spent three hours on the car and have lots to do. Now we need to move on to the interior of the car, which needs some help. And I thought to make it easier, we would lower the top so you can actually see what we're doing. And then it came to my mind that we've never tried lowering the top. And if the top's broken, we're in a lot of trouble because this is probably one of the most expensive moving parts of the car besides the engine. So we're gonna hope. I haven't heard about these tops having issues, but again, 
they all do, I feel like, so. So let's see. Where is the top button? Center console. Oh, well, it's something. It's slow. It's a little lackadaisical, you know? Whoa. Oh my, it's gonna eat it. Oh. This is a complicated thing, dude. Oh, it sounds not great. It's not, it doesn't sound happy, but it's... Oh. Uh. And two years later... Oh. Two years later, the top is down. It's kind of cool without the roof on. Yeah, well, it's a bit of a little vibe. I'm not really like a convertible person, and I'm definitely not like a M3 convertible person, but it is not bad, that's for sure. A little vibe, brother. Let me show you what we're working on. So, now that we have the top down, do you see this? Uh, this interior has seen better days. This steering wheel is pretty toast. It's gooey. It's, it's not only like the leather is so worn down that it's actually shiny, I really haven't seen that much. Shiny and like missing. Yeah, there's some parts that are like fading away. It feels terrible and the stitching is starting to burst at the bottom, um, which is not great. To fix the steering wheel problem, we have Whoa. this steering wheel. Fancy guy. Which is not only not terrible and falling apart, it's made of Alcantara with BMW M stitching and it's a lot thicker. And this feels is the best feeling steering wheel. I wish you could feel this right now. It's actually, mm. it's actually great. <laughs> I love Alcantara. I know some people hate it because, you know, over time it does kind of wear it down. But if you it's take cool when it's nice, of it, bro. Yeah, Alcantara feels so good. I wish everything was made of Alcantara. I wish my skin was made of Alcantara. There is little holes, as you can see. One here one here, same on this steering wheel, and you put a screwdriver through and you pull these springs and they allow for the airbag to pop out. But to be extra safe, by the way, when you're working with airbags, I may be not so good at working on cars, but what I do know is that you need to disconnect the battery. Even if this battery is a little low on juice, don't risk it. <laughs> Will's had airbags go off on him. I also did it the other day in the M Coupe. Remember when I did the steering wheel? Oh yeah. Yeah. Don't be Will. Yeah, don't be me. Be PSA. smart. Will is going to do this because I'm he got scared. so afraid. And that's because it's pretty scary jamming a screwdriver into an airbag that could potentially deploy. But Will was able to get it done quickly. We're the bomb defusal squad right now. <laughs> that would be bad if we were that. <laughs> yeah, do not trust us to yeah. do that. Good? Yeah. Clear. With the scary part out of the way, we just need to unbolt the wheel and pop the new one on. But these bolts are really tricky. They're always torqued down super hard and usually quite thin, meaning they're easy to strip. But with some brute force and ignorance, Will got it done. Pure strength. Holy jeez. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> that was scary. Speaking of brute force and ignorance, we have a merch drop. It's going on right now and will only be available for a few more days. We got everything from Crankshaft branded tees to a collaboration with 996 Road Trip featuring both of our Porsches. And these ones are almost sold out. So go on the site right now and ensure you get one before they're gone. <laughs> Give them the secret code. Yeah. Up, up, down, down, left, right. Oh, oh that was right. Wait, ready? Yeah, oh, yeah, one more. Up, up, down, down. Left, right, left, right. Oh, and then, there you go. That's you gotta do. Yeah. yeah, simply just do that if you're steering wheels. Yeah, that's, it's a little known secret. Sometimes you have to hit B, then A, then enter. <laughs> um, but like this seems like it came up. Yeah, that one's an old one, so it doesn't yeah, need as much. It's like know? an old car. It's, yeah, it's not as complicated or something. All right, now we gotta make sure this goes on straight. It can sometimes take a few tries to get the steering wheel on properly, but once on, it's very easy to reinstall everything, including the airbag. Oh, heck yeah, dude. He got the Alcantara wheel. Oh, that makes the car much faster, I feel. See, that's, uh, that's another one. Let's fix the next thing. We have a lot to do still. Uh, by the way, it's the next day we pause the clock, if you're wondering, so. We ran out of time. <laughs> we haven't run out of time yet. We're still, how many hours into all this are we? Like, like four? Yeah, yeah, four. Yeah, four hours. <laughs> we've, we've been bad at timing it, but we are doing it in 24 hours. There was just a period in between <laughs> because we had stuff to take care of. The reason this car has probably not been driven is definitely the diff bushings. Every time you try to drive it, we've moved it literally a tiny bit. It clunks. Every time you get on and off the clutch, huge clunk. It feels like the entire rear end is going to fall out of the car. And that's because the diff bushings are gone, as we showed you. So now we're gonna attempt to change the diff bushings. Uh, it's, it's allegedly a little bit straightforward, but you do have to get the diff out of the car, which is annoying. 
So let's do it. In order to get the dip out, we need to remove a lot of things, starting with the exhaust. We kind of lucked out a bit because the bolts don't seem too rusty. And all we need to do is drop a couple of hangers. With that out of the way, we now move on to the axles. These are at a tough angle, but with the right tools, aren't too challenging to get off. And we even came up with our special strategy. We found a strategy, check this out. These are a pain to get out. They require quite a lot of uh, torque because they've probably never come off the car ever. Step, get the wrench on, and now attach the breaker bar. And Will's gonna. Oh, yeah. oh my god. Oh. Ready? What y'all know about this? Get an axle off of M3. You just need a hanging setup. Oh, With the hanging setup, we can get these off pretty quick, which is good because we need all the time we can get. We're now able to move on to getting the drive shaft disconnected, which is a very similar process to the axles, but a bit more straightforward. From there, we can support the differential with a transmission jack to make sure it doesn't fall and start on doing all the supports that hold it on. Turns out though that this can be slightly dangerous. <laughs> what, what Holy shit. Oh my god, the diff moved a lot. I think it's out. Oh my god, I got hit in the head with the drive shaft. <laughs> That's what happened. I hope that got it. That's what, I had no idea what just happened. The drive shaft dropped just to nail me directly in there. Does that have a view on this? Yeah. <laughs> In order to ensure that the diff doesn't fall and also hit me in the head, uh, we're gonna lower the car, put a table jack up, take the last bolt out, and then it should fall onto the table jack, which will ensure that no one gets hurt and the diff that is really dense and weighs a lot doesn't uh, come crashing to the floor and break. So, let's do that. The diff is in there pretty good, so we have to keep adjusting it to try to get it to come free. I'm having to use a bunch of tools to try to push the diff over the rear subframe, but it turns out it's not so easy. However, after a lot of playing around with it, it finally decided to come out. Got it. Dip out! Oh my god, this, this thing is violent. With the dip finally on the floor, we can start to get the old bushings out. Now bushings are a pain and require some special tools. This one pushes on the center of the bushing while holding onto the other side to ensure we can get it to pop out. But even with the right tools, it takes a little bit of fiddling around to get it right. Once we have the old bushings out, including the metal ring that was being incredibly stubborn, we can start to install the new bushings. This is the easy part, to be honest. They just pop right in and with a mallet, you can ensure that they are seated 100%. No wonder the car was clunking. This was one of the bushings. There, there is no bushing left on that. The last bushing is under the car. But once that out, we can put everything back together and move on to the next stage. Next, while we have the top still down, we're gonna detail the entire interior of the car. It's uh, been sitting and it has many random gross things in it. Uh, and I think we can make it look a lot better. Me and Will actually used to both do car detailing. So, fun fact. This is a part that we do know how to do. Somewhat, yeah. Yeah, somewhat. We're getting better at the working on cars part, but the detailing, we got. We're gonna so go crazy. Let's don some gloves and get the interior all good. With Will and I's detailing experience, this should be pretty easy. We just have to throw away all the trash, vacuum, and wipe off any surfaces that need attention. Will is going the extra mile by using some leather conditioner to bring the seats back to life. We're also, of course, gonna clean the floor mats by giving them a good wash and scrub, and also clean the rear convertible deck lid, which was super dusty. All right, well, the final step is to wash the entire car, because honestly, this thing is disgusting. It hasn't been washed in years. And uh, before we sell it to anybody uh, who will properly enjoy it, we want to make sure that it actually looks okay for them. So we're going to wash not only the car, but also the engine We're going bay. to do more than wash it. I'm going to give it a little polish. Oh, Will's even going to give it a little polish. He's like an old Corvette man at a show. He's got that 101 Corvette he's polishing all day, keeping it nice and clean. I love this thing is absolutely disgusting, and it desperately needs a wash. So we're going to do that, and I think it's going to really actually change the way this car looks. I mean, we've done all the maintenance work. We've done preventative maintenance work. We've cleaned the interior, we've made the interior better, and now we actually need to make the exterior of the car look good. This is already a pretty good looking car, but it is uh, sadly not in great it's state. Filthy. So let's do that, and this should be a great transformation. I'm excited to see it done. To start, we're gonna wash the engine bay. I doubt this has ever been cleaned because it's absolutely disgusting. But cleaning an engine bay is the easy part of the wash. We just need to spray a little cleaner in there, scrub it, spray it, and dry it. And with that out of the way, we can move to the hard task. 
deep cleaning this old car. We first start with the wheels, which take a ton of work because of how disgusting these ones are. From there, we do a regular wash with water, a foam cannon, and some sponges. Once done, we can move to the not so regular part of the wash. In order to really get this thing clean, we need to clay bar the whole car. This gets rid of all the little stubborn pieces of dirt and contaminants that are still stuck in the paint. Lots of people use actual clay, which works just fine, but we're using a synthetic clay bar with some detailing spray to get the job done. After that, we simply rinse it down, dry it, and move it inside for the next part. This is the cut and polish phase, which is very, very time consuming. But luckily for us, we still have a few hours left on our 24 hour clock, so hopefully we don't run into any problems. Problems. In order to save time, Will and I are both going over separate panels and buffing machines, and the car is turning out absolutely amazing. The cutting compound gets rid of all the micro scratching in the paint, and the polish brings out an amazing finish which makes the car look brand new. I mean, look at how amazing the car looks now. Just like that, we've turned a rotten, old, abandoned E46 M3 into what can actually be moved on to the next owner and properly enjoyed. I hate to see enthusiast cars just left to rot. I'm happy. It really made me relive my uh, E46 M3 days, and uh, I'm excited for the next person to be able to enjoy it. Subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.